Hello to you and hello to a new unit. We're learning something called ice tables in here, which is a way of keeping track of all the changing concentrations in an equilibrium system. So this first example has hydrogen gas reacting with iodine gas to produce hydrogen iodide. And here's the reaction again. And under it, we have rows for initial amounts, changes in the concentrations, and equilibrium amounts. All of these amounts in here have to be concentrations, and please notice that's not what they give you in the question. Now, this step is going to be a little dull because the volume is one liter. When you calculate a concentration for hydrogen, let's say, concentration is number of moles divided by volume, so it's 0 0.1 moles divided by a volume of 1 liter, which is 0 0.100 moles per liter. So that's our initial concentration for the hydrogen, and I'll put that down here. So if you like drawing wrong conclusions, you'll say, OK, so you just take this number and put it in the table. That'll work as long as it's a 1 liter container. As soon as we make this any other number, which will happen, you will have a bad time because your concentrations will all come out wrong and so will everything else. So please pay attention to this. If you see one later, then yes, you get off easy, but if it's any other number, do your C equals N over V. So in this case, we started with 0.100 moles per liter of hydrogen, the same amount of iodine. They say we put those in a one liter flask. They don't say anything about putting hydrogen iodide in the flask, so you can safely assume we had none. After some time, the system reaches equilibrium, and you measure the iodine concentration to be 0 0.020. So iodine ends up at equilibrium here. That time they did give a concentration, so you wouldn't have had to divide that by the volume. And now they say find the equilibrium, equilibrium amounts. In other words, solve everything else in this table. So. There are three changes that we could calculate. There's equilibrium amounts of hydrogen and HI. We want all that. It generally goes something like this. You want to get some number in the change row. And for iodine, we know we started with 0.100. We ended up with 0.20, or 0.020. So our change must have been minus 0.080. Now that you have that number, the coefficients of hydrogen and iodine are both 1, so they are 1 to 1. The, their numbers should be the same here. We tell people that concent C can stand for the change in concentration, or it can be the created amount or the consumed amount. Those all start with C. C is also for coefficients, and this is the only row that has to obey the reaction coefficients. These other ones don't have to be 1 to 1 to 2. But this row does. So if these numbers are equal, because they're 1 to 1, this column is 1 to 2 with the others, so it should be twice as big. This should be 0 0.160. And, as we've seen many times before, if the left side of your reaction is going down, the right side should be going up. So this would be a plus 0.160. And now that we have all that, filling these in is just accounting. We started with 0.100, we lost 0.080, so we're down to 0.020. And for the HI, we started with none, we gained 0.160, so now we have 0.160. And those are our finished amounts. So if they said just what's the equilibrium state of the system, this would be the answer. But they also want the equilibrium constant, and we know how to calculate those. The K for this reaction will be HI squared. hydrogen and iodine and we just found numbers for all those things HI is 0 0.160 don't forget to square it hydrogen is 0 0.02 and iodine the same is that going to be 64? 1.6 squared divided by it comes out to exactly 64 for this example. 
let's try another one. In an experiment, PCL3 and CL2 were placed in a one liter nice flask at 250 and the system does this. Okay, so this time they didn't set up the table for us. We get to do it. So write your reaction nice and big so you have room to put information under it. PCL3. This is a very popular reaction for equilibrium questions. Probably has been for centuries. And we have initial change equilibrium and what do we know? We had 0.200 moles per liter of PCL3. We have 0.100 of chlorine. We're dividing by one so these numbers are not changing. They don't say anything about phosphorus pentachloride so we can assume there was none. The system comes to equilibrium at which point we're down to 0.120 of PCL3. Kind of similar numbers to the last one. That's a bit dull of us. Okay, where do you think we start? We want a number in the change row, and we can't find one for PCL5 or chlorine, but we can for this because we know the initial and equilibrium. 0.200 minus 0.120 gives 0.080. These are 1 to 1, so 0.080 again. And actually, they're all 1 to 1, so 0.080 one more time. Sometimes I get lax and don't put the signs on these, but on the left side, we're using reactant. We know that because PCL3 went down. Chlorine must also go down, and if one side's going down, the other side has to go up because atoms don't just disappear. So our right side must be increasing. And now that we have that, chlorine started at 0.100, went down by 0.080. We should be down to 0.020. PCL5, we started with none, we made, made 0.080, so now we have 0.080. And those are our equilibrium amounts. For the K, I'll do this a little fast because I don't suppose you have too much trouble writing the formula. It's PCL5, 0.080, over the two reactants, so PCL3 and chlorine. 0.08 divided by 0.12 divided by 0.02. Congrats. thought my calculator was on, and it was not, so now I get to do it again. And I get 33.33333 for the equilibrium constant. The numbers going into here, this 0 0.020 only has two significant digits, so we can only give two for our answer, so we should trim this down to 33. And as we've mentioned before, equilibrium constants don't have units. So 33 is all we need. Good.